Hey guys, it's Tiz from the Install Bay. We're going to show you how to hook up one of these LP7-2s on the bench so that you have an idea of how to hook it up. We got a lot of questions about this guy, so stay tuned. Let's go ahead and see what comes in the box. Comes with some instructions. The unit itself, the power plug, and a small gain screwdriver. So let's take a look at the instructions. So what we have is a constant 12 volt input. The blue wire is a remote output. The black wire is a ground input. The tan wire will not be used, it's a shield ground. Then you have your inputs left and inputs right. Then you have your outputs. Now, this sounds simple, but it's very confusing and most people just get totally lost on this one. Especially with this portion right here where it shows these scissors and it shows these plugging into this end here. This whole thing is just, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how you're supposed to do it in real time. Then we'll go down here to the bottom and we'll show you how to use your voltmeter to adjust the output. So here's the unit here. Now they say to start with this turned all the way down. So we'll go ahead and do that. Next you have your harness that's just gonna plug in like this. Now what we like to do is take these three right here and separate them totally from the rest as well as just go ahead and cut the brown wire short. Now depending on what you're going to be using this for, whether high pass or low pass, in this case we're going to hook it up as a low pass because that is the most common application. And these RCAs are what pretty much screw everybody up. Because what they're showing you is they want you to cut these things off. So go ahead and grab them here and just cut them off. You don't need them. This is where the amplifier is going to plug in here. So go ahead and strip these back. Now you have four wires. You have two solid colors, which are white and gray, and you have two striped, which are going to be white with black and gray with black. The solids are going to be your positives, and the stripes are going to be your negatives. Now, there's two schools of thought as far as hooking up the high level. Bass is recorded in a mono track, which means technically you only need to go to one speaker. Some people like to go to two. That's entirely up to you and how you like to do it. In this case, just because we're doing it on the bench, and for test purposes, we're just going to twist these two together just to work our way through this. So go ahead and strip your two striped wires. And strip your two solid wires. And then twist those two together. So what you end up with is basically two wires. Now we want to take that and we're going to hook it up to the output of our radio we have sitting right here. You know, this is just a standard Chrysler radio. It has speaker level outputs, which is what you're gonna run into most of the time. So we'll slide this back a little bit. Now what we wanna do is hook up these two wires to the outputs of this radio. So we're gonna need some extension. You know, if you notice, I cut these two at different lengths. Because anytime I'm extending them, I don't want the two next to one another. It's much easier if you extend them or leave some space. Uh, for either the heat shrink, butt connector, tape, whatever you're going to use, that's up to you. It's just a personal preference. I like to stagger the connections. Now because this is just a demo, we're just going to put some tape over this. Just so that the speakers don't touch. Now our demo radio already has some bullet connectors on it for when we do these tests. So we're going to go ahead and put these on there so that we can plug them into our wire. Okay, so we're hooked up. Now, according that that's the speaker side of things. Now we need to hook up the power side of things because this is what's going to generate our remote turn on to turn on our amplifier. So what we have is it's called signal sense. So it detects the sound coming out of the radio into the high level to low level to create a remote turn on. 
This is great in a new car because that way you don't have to go hunt for an accessory wire. So we have our power and ground. We're going to go ahead and hook them up to these two power and grounds right here. There again for the fact that this is just a test, we're going to just go ahead and put a piece of tape on it so that it doesn't go sparky sparky. All right, so now you should see the red light come on, which is right here. All right, so now the remote turn on should be putting out 12 volts, which we have our voltmeter here. We'll turn this on to DC. We'll go ahead and test our output voltage. As you can see, we have 12 volts. So we'll go ahead and turn the radio off, and it goes away. We'll turn the radio back on, and we have 12 volts. We've just created this cool remote turn on using this. Now what the instructions are saying is that you want to make sure that the sound coming out of this isn't damaging the input of the amplifier. So we're going to move on to that part now. It says to play, in this case, for sub, a 40 hertz sound wave through the radio. For that, we're just using a CD that has a 40 hertz sound wave that comes with this guy here. This is the DD1. The only reason why we broke this out, because we know most of you guys don't have this, is we just want, this particular radio doesn't have numbers on it, and they told you to turn up, and here, it tells you to turn it up three quarters of the way. We have no way to know what three quarters of the way is, so we just want to get an idea of where that's at. So we're going to go ahead and play track five which is 40 hertz at 0 dB. We're going to turn up our volume. It's detecting the 40 hertz. All right, so we know this is where it's not going to clip. So we're good there. Now what we want to do is take our voltmeter and set it to AC. And in this case, we've taken one of those cool RCAs we cut off and attached it to our voltmeter. So we can plug it in here. Now we'll take our cool gain screwdriver, come over to the gain, and start turning this up until it gets to 2 volts. And there we go. So now that we have this all hooked up, we have the radio input, we have the power and ground input, we can go ahead and hook our remote turn on and our RCA up. The RCA will just plug into here. The remote turn on, we'll hook up to this remote turn on, and we can run this back. Now, the question is location. Where can I put this? That's a great question. Some people like to put it behind the radio, like in this example here. I personally like to put it back by the amplifier. It really just depends on the type of install you're doing. The next question would be, if I put it back by the amplifier, can I use the power and ground that I've ran for the amplifier to power this up? And the answer is yes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I like to put it back by the amplifier because you can simply hook up all three of these wires right at the amplifier and hook up your power and ground like so and go directly into the amplifier whereas this ground will be the ground and this power will be the power. So we hope this helps you out. If you guys have any more questions about this, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below and we will get back to you. And while we're at it, why don't you go ahead and please subscribe. We do videos five days a week, so you'll never be without content. Bonus. Otherwise, if you'd like to know more about us, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and right here on YouTube. You guys have a great night, and we will see you later next time. Bye.